Hey everyone, it's Tara here with the Muse Whisperer. And today I wanted to come and talk to you about a common phrase I run into with a lot of my clients and people who are even potential clients. I feel like I'm doing it all right, but the results are not showing up the way that I expect them to. Or they might say like, I'm trying so hard, but life isn't returning the favor, right? And it could be anything from, with one client, it was a lot of family things. With her extended family, where there was a lot of friction, um, and every time she would show up, she would think that if she was nicer, then she was not going to be talked bad about. Um, she wasn't going to be uh, ostracized. She wasn't going to be villainized, and so on. And yet, every time she would show up for a family function, it was like she was the center of attack. And so she would get nicer and even kinder and it would get worse. And I'm not gonna be the person who says like, hey, get mean, <laughs> like don't go the opposite direction. But a lot of times what happens is that we have people in our lives, whether it's people in our business and our family that really like to see how far they can go with things. And so the nicer that you get, the easier the target that you are. And so I just sp spoke to her about, instead of focusing on the person who constantly raises the bar uh, or the level that you need to get to, to gain their approval and acceptance, remove your attention from that person and put it on people that actually desire to be around you. Allow yourself to go and be in their space. Think about them before the event, right? And it is important to have inside of your uh, awareness that this person always has a gripe about you. So that's what their MO is. Let it go. It's okay. It's okay. Like, your definition of me is not actually based on my definition of me. And that's what I let them know is oftentimes somebody who's constantly ridiculing you or asking you to, to jump to another level has very little understanding of who you are. And so allow them to have whatever it is as a definition of who you are and go hang out, give attention to the people you want to. Because too often we're trying to turn around clients, coworkers, family members that have an ill uh, definition of us when really there's zero attention to be given there. Zero attention. And that doesn't mean that you don't interact at all, right? I'm meaning like attention as in in your mind, in your emotions and so on. To walk in and still greet and say hello and even have small talk is okay. Now, most of the clients that I work with don't like small talk, but the people that you want to have deep talk with are the people who get you. The other people, it's okay to talk about things that are on the surface, the weather, vacations, how their kids are doing, all of those kind of things, what we're eating, you know, that kind of thing. If you want to go deeper, it needs to be somebody who is a contribution to you and you feel they receive your contribution. You contributing, but feeling like it falls at their feet and they trample on it, stop contributing. They don't actually want it. I hope that makes sense. So if you would like to play with this, Watch how your relationships change as well as how, is, how you feel in different circumstances. Now, let's say there's somebody at your work and your family or somewhere else who needs a lot of attention that you don't want to contribute to. They make it all about them. The greatest thing that you can do is to make it all about them. So here's my favorite three little words is tell me more. 
allow the conversation, whatever it is, have a couple subjects in your back pocket, you know, like how are things going with the family? How are things going with work? What are your plans coming up? Whatever it is. And if they start to turn it like, hey, what are your plans? Just go, wait a minute, wait a minute. I haven't gotten enough. I'm really interested. Tell me more about what you were just talking about. You will find that those people who want to be the center of attention and who you may even feel like don't deserve even a whisper of your breath, that if you uh, uh, apply this tactic, this tool, that there is less angst. Now, a lot of people go, well, that's inauthentic. Well, if your being is a kind being, and that you do like to be interested, it's not inauthentic to you. That's who you are. You may not actually have interest in them because they've done so much harm to you, but if you want to uh, change the dynamic that's in the pod of energy between the two of you, the greatest thing is to take their lead and to follow how they are. And so if their lead is, I like to be the center of attention. I'm not getting enough attention. Allow yourself to give them more attention. Okay, so this could be your sister-in-law, your mother-in-law. And a lot of times, mother-in-law issues are because there's not enough interest in past traditions, cultures, like how they did it, like what's come up so far. And so if you just ask more questions and use those three little words, tell me more, there's an amazing shift that can happen. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that you guys are gonna become best of friends, but what we're looking to do is to neutralize the toxicity that's happening so that you can go to a family function, go to work, um, go to these different things without feeling like life has been sucked out of you or that you just dropped into a pile of acid, right? not what we want to do. We don't want to walk away from work or family functions feeling like you just got filled with tons of poison and you have to detox. And we have the capacity to change that. So in the two different circumstances, one, um, you know, you don't need to put a lot of attention on how to fix things or worrying about their level, allow them to judge as they are. Like we all judge, everybody judges. Anybody out there who says that they don't judge, I would love to meet you because we're constantly uh, receiving awarenesses that will let us know whether something works or doesn't work. And then how long we stay with it is judgment. But anyways, Allow other people to judge. It's literally just their opinion or their awareness in the moment, right? Let them have your own awareness of yourself and then choose to put your attention where you desire to put your attention. But if somebody is seeking more attention, the greatest way is to allow them to share more of themselves. You may see that person shift even in their, their personality once they actually receive attentive attention, right? Rather than like feeling like they're pushing themselves on somebody and they're being thrown back. So I would love to know what your experiences are with this, especially going into the holidays, but even if you're applying it to situations at work, um, in that situation, if you're applying those, those tools at work, and let's say that you're saying to somebody, tell me more, tell me more, you can still apply choice. Like, okay, do I want to have this person as a partner at work? You know, like, let's say you own your own business, you get choice. Is this person contributing to my well being, to my business, or are they just seeking more and more from me? And I'm helping their bottom line. I'm cushion, you know, putting cushion into their life and they're actually putting more pressure, toxicity and so on. And it's really important as a business owner to get really clear about the environment, not just the, the bottom line, but the environment that you want to work in because it will factor into all the other areas of your life, but also who you're attracting. Because while you're keeping people in 
your business from clients to other partners, like some people that I work with, they have um, other brokers that they work with, um, you know, other estate agents and so on. And so making sure that you're working with people who contribute not just financially to your business, but to your well-being and who are who appreciate that partnership is key. Otherwise, you will continue to attract people who are toxic and who really run over you in order to get business. And so when you choose to constantly work with people who have a high level of investment and integrity, people will rise to that place in order to work with you, both as clients as well as partners. So to me, it's never about boundaries. It's always about getting clear on who you are, what you want to have in your life, and opening the door to those people who want to enter it and running ahead of those who, who don't, right? So we, we are constantly in motion and in movement. When we put boundaries up, we stay still and to keep people out, but it also keeps people who are in movement and creating forward momentum, they don't stay with us because they're stuck constantly in movement. So the greatest thing we can do is to know what we want from our lives, all aspects, not just money, money included, but not just money, continue to move towards it, keep the back door open for anybody who maybe didn't want to honor that, and then let them come back in once they arise to that space. It's all about you when you honor and you have constantly, you are constantly a space of invitation, whereas boundaries is all about them and keeping people out. And so you'll find that once you move into the space of honoring, you get really clear and you're constantly surrounded by more people who are in alignment with that honoring space. So if you have any questions or even more than that, if you have any situations that you've played with some of these tools around and you wanna share, I would love to hear. Thank you so much for tuning in and I hope you have an amazing holiday.